I would love to talk to you to spend maybe an hour or a little bit more talking about the my favorite, my current favorite product, which is a SQL managed instance. And the title of the presentation is what's new in Azure SQL managed instance. Uh, this news, this presentation is focused on what's new in November of 2021. Why? Because we kind of like, um, we, we have a platform as a service uh, offering, which means we constantly update it, we patch it, we improve it. So I hope to be back one day um, and maybe, you know, what's new in November 2022? Who knows? All right, with that, let's go. Um, this is my name. Um, Twitter, LinkedIn, put my weird name somewhere. You should be able to find me. Uh, I work as a senior program manager in Asia SQL product group, but in the end, I mean, I have, I'm not going to throw any credentials. I, I, the true story about my professional life is I loved um, Microsoft Data Platform that much that I abandoned being a customer and, uh, you know, joined the dark side and helping shaping and developing the product that we all hopefully use. So our agenda for today is intro. I want to talk. It, it sounds it's a big title. It occupies almost all slides. It's kind of marketing ish. Don't worry, we'll get through it. So before advancing with precisely what is new, let's review what was new in the 12 months before the November of 2021. And then three key things, the hybrid, hybrid flexibility, hardware performance and scalability and modern security. You, you can read that this is, it's not me who wrote these titles. They are smart, you know. Um, one question I want to talk to you about the Azure SQL this and please just don't worry, but give me some feedback. Raise your hand if you have no clue what Azure SQL is. Because I, I want us to be on, on the same page. Nobody's raising their hand. I am assuming everybody are aware. I will just softly repeat that. So Azure SQL is a family. We include the infrastructure as a service or IAS. It's basically the same virtual. It's not the same. They're better. Um, and I can prove it. I can actually back up my my um, my words because I'm a technical person. Um, so you can run the SQL Server not only on premises or in any other place, um, your SQL Server, but you can run on Azure in Azure SQL virtual machines. And besides running it and some cool features, we also allow you to configure, to view the licensing, a lot of stuff uh, even outside the VMs. We also have a platform as a service. We have the Azure SQL database, which comes with different flavor pre-provisioned the original Azure SQL database, then serverless, which can scale up and scale down dynamically, even suspend, and hyperscale. Hyperscale, it's, you can go up to 100 terabytes of storage, but that's a one single, a kind of isolated database, and it's the best when you are developing a cloud-born application. When something new is being created for the modern times. If you have a legacy application, if you are needing some of the exclusive features that the other flavors do not support, and you need still a platform as a service, go straight ahead to Azure SQL Managed Instance, which is in the center, and it's the subject of my presentation. Besides um, somebody who is using a title, which I think pretty unique in the old SQL family uh, space, that's you, Johan. Um, um, anybody else is using managed instance? Write down like me or plus one in the chat so I can like kind of understand your knowledge about the managed instance. Please. Yes, Johan, I know that you are using it. <laughs> Antonius, okay. Anybody else using? Anybody using Azure SQL database? 
anybody using a platform as a service? John, Patel, anybody? Okay. Okay, yeah. Oh, people are watching. That's good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Okay, great. So just to make sure, because not the majority of you are not using managed instance, I want to make sure that you really understand, that all of us understand. So once again, building, um, migrating, modernizing your application at scale. So it's a kind of a, a SQL server that we manage and run for you. We configure some of the stuff. We ensure it's always up to date and we do a lot of really, really interesting stuff. It's focused on maximum compatibility with a regular SQL server. For example, such features as a COR, extensions, um, service broker, SQL agent per se, because SQL database does not have an agent. You have Elastic jobs, but it's a different kind of a horse to me. So Azure SQL, data, uh, SQL managed instance gives you as close as possible the maximum compatibility with SQL Server. It's fully managed on our side and we isolate and secure. I mean, not even a day probably passes that in my uh, in my group, in the product group, we do not discuss a security related happenings and worries. So what, 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 what does it mean, this title, evergreen version? It means for those of you who are TBAs, I will deliver a good and a bad message. <laughs> it's like you can choose. So if you leave by spending your time by just patching and updating SQL Server and you loved it, you will not like Azure SQL Managed Instance. If you leave by having the same old features without anything new, you will not like managed instance. If you absolutely have a wild joy in debugging a difficult problem and um, having your manager screaming at you why it didn't work, managed instance is not for you. Because we run an evergreen version. We update with newest and Azure only feature by connecting with, and I, I, I will show you some scenario which is exclusive, you can have it on Azure SQL Managed Instance right now only. Forget about the per, uh, perpetual major version upgrades, even the minor version upgrades, forget about them. We will manage it for you. You can do whatever you know the best. You can manage the performance of your SQL Server, you can write the right code, you can tune it. That's what we are targeting with the platform as a service. So we offer a industry leading high availability that's four nines, which is financially backed uh, by an SLA uh, service level agreement. If your company needs, you can hire a premium support by SQL Server engineering team 24 seven. We have engineers 24 seven any given day who are on calls. And actually, I'll tell you a joke. I am on call uh, program manager for managed instance this week. I hope nothing will disturb this presentation, hopefully. Um, anyway, we do the backups. If you love taking backups, you know, you start the backups, you spend three hours, whatever the time takes, you know, um, uh, relaxing. Don't worry, you don't have to do this anymore. And we integrate your new services continuously so you can get more, uh, not more performant, that's a wrong term, faster and safer. This is what we are targeting. So uh, ultimate isolation, security, connectivity. I'm, I'm not diving in this. I'll just say one thing. When you deploy a managed instance, it has only private endpoint for connections. It means that you can connect only within the same Azure VNet. You cannot connect outside 
to the managed instance. You need to go click and enable public endpoint. That's how you can connect from your workstation. Typically, people in the uh, like three years ago, they would fire up a VM within the same subnet even, and then they would be connecting from this VM. So we are crazy about security, totally crazy in the best positive way, of course. So um, uh, these are slides where you can, I'm sharing the slides in the end, you can read them and enjoy your time. I want to show you the real stuff. But before that, just like a, a reminder of what we have delivered in the 11, uh, in the 12 months before the last Ignite, which was like two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago now. Um, so in the second part of 2020, we delivered 11 updates. Like we started the preview of database distributed um, transactions. We added the backup uh, redundancy. Uh, there were some performance improvements and a little tip. If you judge manage instance by a two year old or three year old blog post, you must be doing something wrong because we can improve it on monthly, if not weekly basis. And machine learning services, a lot of, a lot of you know, stuff, security, always security, because we, we should be actually changing to always secure. Uh, I don't know, just kidding, uh, maybe not. Um, so what we did in the first six months of this calendar year of 2021, in June, we announced the 16 terabytes preview for the general purpose. It's a pretty, you know, we can host a pretty big databases right now. We improved the backup performance. I'll show you some internals um, about it. Um, we integrated deeply with Azure Active Directory by the Azure AD only authentication. Uh, in preview with G8 machine learning, we introduced something very interesting and not a lot of customers are, are aware. When you set up or configure a, main, a managed instance, you can select a maintenance window and this maintenance window you define when we are upgrading or patching your managed instance. And I know it's pretty big, but stay tuned. We just started working on it. We will be making it significantly, very significantly smaller. And then, you know, um, a lot of stuff. Just I will highlight the lowest one, Azure uh, Monitor SQL Insight. Check it out, uh, brilliant feature as far as I'm concerned. And seven months ago, I was on your side, on the customer side. So um, you can monitor on Azure Monitor together, Azure SQL Database, uh, SQL um, managed instance and SQL server and SQL server with availability groups all in one place. So pretty awesome stuff. And you have like over 100, I think maybe like 250, 250 different metrics that I picked up uh, for you and you can customize it up to no good. So the key message here 25 updates in the last 12 months for a SQL managed instance. At this point, you should be having just one question for me. Like, Nico, we can do math. And 11 plus 13, that's not 25. You're right. I mean, I can't fool you, period. So we introduced pretty silently, but a very, very major thing, uh, Terraform uh, support. Anybody here uses Terraform or maybe Ansible, anything? Uh, Antonius, anyone else? No? If you don't know what Terraform is and you work with the cloud, check it out. I mean, this is like, this is an awesome thing, uh, awesome library way of deploying and configuring. And we are um, completely um, compatible. Um, my colleague um, Urush, he worked with the Terraform team and we support all the CRUD operations currently. It was a major ask. I, as a customer, I asked for this. <laughs> and when I saw it's coming, I'm like, hmm, that's uh, good news. Anyway, let's view the cool stuff. <clears throat> let's view what is fresh as it can be. Hybrid flexibility. So if you have been sleeping under the desk, might happen to all of us, you might have 
not heard, but you should have, that we are introducing something that we call in managed instance link. Managed instance link is a connection that you can establish between SQL Server running anywhere and you can connect the SQL Server to managed instance. Why would you do so? We unlock ads of today just two scenarios. First of all, imagine so this is a Greek user group, right? Imagine that you are using a West Europe data center of Asia and you're running Asia SQL VM and you have a customer which is in Australia and they need to do some reading on your data. Nobody cares about the uh, a, there is there won't be a significant delay. You can go, you can set up a distributed availability group or availability group, asynchronous, whatever, place it there and manage and be awake in at 3 a.m. whatsoever. Or as an alternative, you can fire up a Azure SQL managed instance, which you can scale up, scale down, reconfigure, and establish a link. And this will allow your customer using, for example, Power BI or ETL whatsoever to put the data into Synapse Analytics. You can connect and read the data. So it's kind of a secondary. And you don't have to, and a key thing I will show you, you don't have to run the availability group here by default to do that. The second thing scenario that we are unlocking is you can migrate to managed instance more easily. It's close to zero downtime with, you know, with a little asterisk and of course it depends on what kind of workload there are some conditions apply. But this is from now on the best way to migrate as close online as possible to managed instance, this managed instance link. We are unlocking this feature in a limited means you need to ask and we need to approve public preview. If you go to AKMS uh, backslash MI link, you can find their way to sign up and just the key thing, don't write in the you know reasons why you should be accepted in the limited public preview like, oh, I would really love to. No, bring a business case. Talk to your customers, talk to your company, whatever, what is your case? You know, give us understanding why you should be one of the first to see and try it out. So would you like to know how does it work or would you like to see a demo? And people are like, we are sleeping. We don't know, um, right? Demo. Demo? Yeah, demo? sure. De of demo, course. Demo, de demo. Um, 10,000 times, right? So as you can see here, I am running something that is called SQL Server. Wow, amazing, isn't it? And here is something which I call managed instance. Ha. So let's do and create a database on the SQL Server and then establish a link and create a read-only replica on a managed instance. For that purpose, I'm here going up and up and up we go, and I am connected to SQL Server 2019 with Cumulative Update 13. Let's create a database. Let's pump it up a little bit on the size, on data and log. And let's refresh on the both sides, like meaning I'm not telling you stories which are not true. OK, there is database, but we will kill it. DB, DB Nico, who cares, right? So anybody can tell me what do I need to do in order to create a availability group? What should I do with my database? I need to back it up, right? Please, everybody, friends, family, don't do the backup to the temp folder, especially with overriding it. Don't do it like I'm doing just to for you know demo purposes. So I don't want to show you like, oh, you you cannot migrate because you need to do a full backup. All of you DBAs should be aware of this. 
Next step, right click on my database. Your management studio will not have this option because that's not your grandparents management studio, as they say. So I have this option. You'll get it soon. And then I have two sub menus. Attach database to the cloud. That's for the read only replica and migrate to the cloud. Let's do the attachment first, right? Attach next. I need to make sure that I fulfill the requirements on the server side. Ignore the trace flag. Ignore all the privileges that currently required. We will be improving them. Once we're in a public preview, you know, no, there will be a conversation. Of course, your database cannot have some of the features like file stream that we do not support. Would you like to have a file stream on a remote storage in general purpose service tier? Some people say yes, I say no. Um, and then you need to do a couple of, uh, you know, uh, basic requirements for the availability groups. Next thing, I need to log in, and of course I log, I'm logged out. It, it happens all the time because, you know, security, 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 security. Um, and I need to... Let's see if I made my password correct. If it asks me for additional security, then I did. Yeah, it is. And so I'm signing in to my, uh, what? I'm clicking and nothing happens. Is this, is this something we are going to do? Okay, let's try it again. You know, demo gods, they should be kind. I might be needing uh, to uh, restart. Uh, yes. Do, 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 do. I might be needing to restart this VM because sometimes things happen. Let's see. Any questions? In the meantime, let's use the time. I'm sure some of you like um, like Antonius are already aware of this feature and. Ah, I'm sorry for that. Just a second, we'll solve it. That's not a problem. I'm just need what to is? make sure. I love this feature because I have a plenty of scenarios to implement uh, connecting with Synapse because I love Synapse a lot. This is, is going to, to, to help me to, to eliminate a lot of uh, ETL processes. Mm -hmm. Okay, signing in. Okay, and my authenticator tells me in three to one, hopefully, that I need to approve my token. And we're waiting. Okay, approve it. That's beautiful. So basic mistakes by me happens all the time, just by me. You you have no such problems, I trust <laughs> all of you. Okay, so I signed in to my, um, did it crash? No, uh, just, okay, I know what happened. It didn't go a full screen, it go, yeah. Okay, so, please. OK, no worries. OK, so I signed into my um, my account. I need to select the right subscription, the right resource group, then the right managed instance, and then I just simply log into my selected managed instance. Currently, you need to have um, administration privileges. It will get better, hopefully, in the future. On the next screen, you will simply need to make sure that you've got certificates on the both sides 
then um, on both sides means on your SQL Server side and on your managed instance side. Managed instance has one by default. Uh, the old 5022 port. Then we determine the IP address by default, but you can change it if your server has multiple IPs and you want to use a specific one. And then we create the availability and over availability group, we will create a distributed availability group. You can change the names if it matters to you. Click, 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 drag it, drop here, right? So next thing I am hoping that it should be done, okay? What can we see on our SQL Server side? We have still our database. It's right now synchronized. And I have an availability group, and over it, I have a distributed availability group, which means if I refresh my managed instance in just one, two, three, wow, well, there is a database. So let's connect to it. Let's see which server I am connected to. As you can see, that's my managed instance. That's a cluster name, database, windows.net. That's a managed instance, right? Let's get into our database and let's see if it's readable or writable. And of course, it's read only because it's being replicated, right? So I told you that it's actually like as close to the real time as possible. Okay, let's. Create some table inside the database and let's start hammering it with simple transactions. Let's switch to managed instance and let's run a max operation on it. And you can see as transaction last ID 7, 8,000, 9,000, 10 as they're landing. So if I go here to my primary and stop the workload and go here, 16147 and it didn't change. So it's not a guarantee or if you put a, you know, 160 cores with super fast storage and then a very tiny network and you say, you know what, managed instances link. I won't believe you. I will, I will say, you know, you need to correct your infrastructure for that. Uh, in order to judge the the software itself. So it's kind of like you see it's being replicated reasonably uh, fast. How can I use the managed instance in the meantime? I can connect to it and I can create a database. This is a managed instance. Let's create a DB Nico. It takes a lot of seconds to create a default database because that's managed service, and this is a business critical service tier, means there are four replicas on the background, four synchronous replicas. So we create a database, we reseed it to other replicas. We go and register all of them, or at least two of them, uh, the primary and the readable uh, replica on Azure in all processes. We start doing the backup and then we make it available. So creating a database is not an instant process. But now since I created the database on managed instance, I can you know, I can go and create this database, dbnico is writable. So you can mix the workloads, the database itself which serves for the managed instance link. And we will be improving the, because those of you who are DBAs, they like, there is something missing. Yes, we are, we are aware of this. Um, you can run the databases to the workloads. It's just, a, you know, in standby. It's not in standby, it's in read only mode. So let's migrate to Azure, clicky clicky. Draggy droppy, right? I need to re log in. Then I need to log into my managed instance. I don't have to select it, it's already pre selected because we already established the link between the SQL Server and the MI. And then I can do one of the two failover types, either a plant one where I confirm that we don't do writes because once we are migrated, you know, 
Pimbas de Carlos, as we say in Portugal, it's like oopsie, oopsie daisies, or like in any other availability groups, you can do a forced failover, right? And it's up to you what happens then. Let's do a planned failover. Let's delete the both distributed and uh, availability groups because we won't need them anymore. Clicky. And what we will do, we even go as far, we compare the log sequence number, the LSNs on both sides, in order to like make sure that you didn't um, make a mistake and your database is not getting written as you are migrated. So the first attempt was successful, the third, second and third were not needed at all. Success, close, Let's get back to our managed instance. Let's check on updatability, and here we go. It's read write. Okay, I just migrated the database to managed instance. Clicky clicky, drag it, copy. No more, you know. Um, not even you don't need even a, an extension on ADS, or you don't need to use the Azure migration services. Nothing. Just distributed availability groups. Any comments on that? Like, boo, wow, more or less. Oh, more or less wow or more or less boo. Yeah, sweet, sweet. If you have no diabetes, Jan, that's sweet. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, I'm, I'm, go I'm repeating myself so availability group and we created a distributed that's not the same distributed availability groups you have currently on sql server these are enhanced distributed availability groups and we are proud to uh, support some extra things for the upcoming sql server 2022 not for the distributed availability groups but we'll have some extras so what can you do? You can migrate one by one your databases. Currently, managed instance link is on database level. So you need to, if you have 100 databases, you need to establish 100 links. We won't throttle or limit you, so it, it works fine. And you can do the stuff I told you, you can do, you know, placing yourself, um, your managed instance, wherever it serves you best or you can use it for a near um, near zero downtime migration to Azure. <clears throat> you can consolidate, meaning you can establish managed instance links from multiple servers into a uh, managed instance, or you can use one single server and point each database to, you know, you have 160 cores uh, CPU, SQL Server. We currently support up to 80 CPU V cores on um, managed instance. You know, pick two and split your workload. Up to you. We support it. So, how do you sign up? That's how you do this. I'll put you the links. I'll be that insisting. Any comments? Any questions, please? Oh, that, Yanis, that's such a beautiful question. Such an awesome question. <sighs> Next question. <laughs> um, I'll put it this way, because especially you are recording. We would love to make you happy. Very, 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 very happy. Okay. That's how happy we want to make you. Is it? Uh, I hope is it satisfying, Yanis? Or <laughs> more questions? Feel free. I'm I'm not a angry person most of the time, uh, so at least my kids say sometimes, uh, and. Uh, or we maybe we can if you raise your hand we can unmute you and you can ask your questions that's you know probably you won't get that many opportunities to, to, to talk to the product group um 
or if you want to give a feedback, maybe you would like to ask like, oh, we need a uh, express edition supporting managed instance link. I'm like, okay, I'm writing this down. Nothing? Nothing else? No, it's, oh, fine. It's, it's, it's not necessary. No. For express, but for standard and enterprise edition, I think it's uh, mandatory. Mm -hmm. I, I, according I to my you. opinion. Oh, oh. oh we, um, have, we, have, we have a lot of customers that uh, has a standard edition of SQL Server. And uh, most of them, uh, they want to go to a pass. So um, why not? Yes. Um, I hear you. We would love to make you happy. Very, very happy about it. I'm sure about that. I'm sure because we have we have you in the product group. <laughs> okay, that's. Uh, I will do my best to to make sure that. I mean, I don't need to make sure. sure. We we officially we're not ready to discuss uh, because we are. Um, you know, we are enabling scenarios for SQL Server 2022 whenever it will go in the public preview and then into general availability or so RTM. And as we will be progressing closer to this feature, uh, availability, public availability and, you know, and general availability, okay. we will definitely talk about the edition. Yes, but, but because I know you very well and uh, I remember a lot of uh, fights that you give in uh, some rooms, I'm sure that you are going to to have a successful result about this. Well, let's, I don't have any more water, but let's cheers to that, my friend. <laughs> okay, any questions to Nico? Okay. Do, do, do not hesitate to do that, Nico, uh, with uh, your question. Nico is a very kind, it's, very, it, 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 it's a very good guy. Okay. No, in, no worries. You, if you feel uncomfortable, if, please. If you would like to to put your question in Greek, okay, put write it in the chat, and I'm going to to transfer it. Yes, great idea. Thank you so much, Antonius. Okay, so let's go forward. Let's talk about the mention since hardware performance and scalability. So what we announced three weeks ago is new hardware larger instances we didn't announce demos uh, and testing results but i'll show you them we uh, um, product group we heard the key customer requests and feedback uh, one of them was people who are customers who are using the managed instance they wanted because we have a, a currently a connection between the number of v cores and the amount of space reserved space you can allocate. It's not completely decoupled. Um, so people wanted to use less cores and have more storage. And they also wanted to have more V core, more memory per V core. And what we introduced is larger storage, uh, storage limits, more memory per V core, and more storage per V core, and even more IOPS per V core. So if you are running managed instance and you did not upgrade it in these three weeks, you will run uh, generation five or as we renamed it standard series. These are under, um, under the hood, the Broadwell, Skylake and Cascade Lake uh, Intel CPUs with frequency 2.3, 2.5 gigahertz. We introduced the premium series Premium series, this is Ice Week. If you're running Column Store, especially check out, we are supporting AVX 512 CIMT, single instruction multiple um, data operations. Um, and its frequency is 2.8 gigahertz. By default, we have seen 15% performance increase based on the Azure compute. We do expect that your workload will not be slower. That's you know a very safe thing we uh, we can share. We have heard from customers 
and uh, they there were tests. I would mention even the Jo Obish name who wrote about some of the tests he ran on Asia SQL Managed Instance saying impressive about the uh, new hardware generation. We are we are very excited to bring it. So one of the key things which force customers to scale to a higher number of cores paying greater SQL Server licenses. That is, we on the, on the standard series, we give 5.1 gigabytes of RAM per vCore. So 80 vCores gives you 408 gigabytes of RAM in total. So it's it's expensive if you need more memory. And you know, SQL Server needs always more memory. So what we did, we just, we exploded it in a way. Premium series, gives you seven gigabytes of RAM per vCore. So it's kind of like, you know, um, a very significant improvement. So you get up to 560 gigabytes of RAM. And then we introduced premium series memory optimized or large instances, as we call it in them internally. They have two and a half times more than the standard series, 13.6 gigabytes of RAM per vCore. Currently, as of today, and if you are watching this record, it might be already different, but 64 CPU V cores for memory optimized premium series is the max. Still, we get more than a double of the maximum memory, <clears throat> which is a very, very unique offer for a platform as a service offerings. Talking about the larger instances, in June, of 2021, we announced a public preview of the 16 terabytes on general purpose server steer, uh, remote storage. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, and we just three weeks ago, we just put it into the general availability. Besides that, we lower the minimum requirement of the CPU V cores to 16 V cores. So if you run a workload with more than one terabyte of disk space, hopefully and needfully compressed, and you use like more than one terabyte per V core, you're not a typical customer to say at least. Uh, reminder, you need to use at least eight, uh, at least two data files because a single data file uh, can occupy on general purpose at maximum eight terabytes. That's a limitation of our current uh, remote storage offering. Um, Johan, your question is, do we need downtime to change current SQLMI to the new type? No, you do not need a downtime besides that you will simply you will start the migration i did six migration processes today because we we're testing something and i did six migration from gp to bc and to new series so you will have a downtime when you do the failover but it's not like you stop the workload it takes the time to be no it's synchronized on the background, and then there is a cutover process. How much time will it take? It depends on many factors. Number of cores, the, the storage, so I, I cannot guess it for you, but it's not expected to be a, a process that will cause you a significant downtime. We also announced 16 terabyte support for business critical. In a limited number of regions, but check it out every single week, okay? Just go to the documentation. This week we updated it. So the things I will be showing you in the next slides, they are not correct anymore. So we increased four times um, the space. And if you think like, oh, oh, I can put it 16 terabytes, what is so special? I mean, besides it's being blazingly fast, I can tell you that because we run four, replicas for synchronous replicas 16 terabytes means that in the background we run for you 64 terabytes right that's not you know 64 terabytes is not the most common number i would say so what is what else did we change we on the premium series we lowered 
uh, the number of cores, if you want to go to two terabytes, you would need to have 24 cores on the standard series. Uh, if you go premium series, you can use 16 cores. It's a 33% cost saving. And customers are already loving it. Okay. Don't get stuck on 64 cores and that's 16 terabytes in only currently on premium series memory optimized. We are working day and night and changing and improving that. Take everything with a grain of salt. If this you, you're not watching this recording in November of 2021, you know, go to documentation. Trust me, you will be much safer. This is not the end. This is just the beginning. Um, under the hood stories, we improve the backup and replica build. So on general purpose, we improve the parallel backup. Key thing I'm tired to repeat to people, the size of your data file on general purpose means your speed. The bigger your data file is, the more IOPS, the more throughput you get. The storage you pay is nothing compared to the licensing. So go higher and grow your data files if you need more performance, especially read performance. Anyway, always test before doing this in production. Confirm there are definitely limitation, exceptions, so on. Just don't take, don't trust to anything I say without the verifying, please. So parallel backup, we will do the backup of each of your data file and we distribute it so it will work faster. And working faster means you have a less impact on your primary. Then we improved uh, replica build for business critical. So if you have out of the four replicas, just one up, what happens? Well, your, you know, your availability group is that probably. We keep your database in read-only mode. We don't allow you to write, should this happen, but you can read it. And what we did before, we started uh, a build process for two more replicas. And once it's done, once we have a, you know, a failover, a high availability, we would open the primary for reading. And then we would do Built for the last read only, read readable replica, the fourth replica. So, what will be changed in improved replica build? You have one instance, you have one instance. We do in build very fast, all resources, like all in, just get it done, one replica. We get it one, your MI is available. Then we do full speed. Uh, build for another replica because we guarantee you even if um, there are two failures on the hardware side or on the patching side you still run your business so we did it and then the last we do slow and governed so kind of like resource government slow you you already run in business we already gave you enough a safety net that it, it shouldn't be going down. So you run your reads, your writes, and we slowly build it in the background. So we give you higher SLA in plain English. I don't know how to say it in plain Greek, but maybe Antonius can help me with that. Um, that's kind of overview slide. Um, premium series has a name of premium, which means it's more, what is it called, expensive. We expect our offer to be very, very competitive. If it's not, please let us know. We see that the bigger offer is the better value we are offering. That's not correct anymore. It's already being, it's, it's better. There are, there are things, there are other regions, so check it out. Um, can I give you last tip? Um, if you go now to portal just for seven more days, because we're in the public preview, 
if you fire up a premium series, a premium series memory optimized in November 2021 until the 1st of December, we will not charge you the SQL Server license. So you will pay only for the compute. Just in November, um, it means like you have one week to try it out. If you want to try it out, be like, that's peanuts. You, will, you won't have such opportunities for a long time. So we tested TPCC and on um, what we've seen, um, I'll go to more. We've seen on the premium series, 20, 30% lower latency on general purpose and 20% lower latency on the business critical, 40% better throughput and 40 to 60 on, on general purpose. And when we go to memory op, Optimized, we are just we are expecting to publish our own and our partners um, um, kind of like uh, official test and review. We have seen uh, two times lower latency on general purpose and up to three times lower latency on business critical and two and a half times better throughput. So it's kind of like it's mind blowing the results we have seen and we not done with the hardware by far by very far we're not done so stay tuned um yeah better better throughput it's more expensive new hardware but it will give you you know it doesn't mean you you, you don't migrate because it's new and shiny find a good business case don't spend your company or your customers money on on you know on something you might not need. Do it the right way, please. This one I ran myself. Um, we took um, 300 gigabytes TPCH database and took one of the official queries, and I just changed a one year of data because I th said you know. Our customers don't run just the simple things. I just put to 20 years. So I don't know how we're doing on time. Um, um, would, I'll show you this, and if in the end, if you want, I have I can show you the live demo, really. Um, so this is the first query I uh, run on the standard series. The memory grant was 6.2 gigabytes, and as you can see, a hash match did a spill, and 600,000 pages were spilled in tempdb it ran for 49 seconds it's it's an okay result business critical uh, service tier eight cores when i saw the execution plan for the premium series i was like oh uh, that doesn't look better it's just two spills but some of the spills was and almost a third less, just 475,000 pages. And the memory grant from 6.2 got 8.7 gigabytes. And we went down 43. I even saw 41 seconds um, execution times on this query. When I went to uh, memory optimized, we got half of the time, 22 seconds. Memory grant was 18 gigabytes. Yes, I was lucky. And I can tell you, it's just one, one of the first attempts, one of the first queries I ran, uh, memory intensive, it went ballistic. Um, absolutely. Why was it so fast? Easy peasy. Faster hardware, but overall, this query is very memory intensive. 18 gigabytes memory grant. If your queries are spewing, and you're running standard series, consider going to the premium series because it will premium series or premium series memory optimize or increase the number of cores in order to get better performance because you don't want to spill on the disk, right? So blah, 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 all, all the standard stuff, it's faster and you can run more queries in parallel. Another example I did, basically 15 queries on standard series, uh, will get you just six memory grants in parallel, uh, nine memory grants on a premium series and all 15 of them plus the query itself on, on the memory optimized premium series. 
faster overall execution, you won't have the 30 seconds web server timeout or your clients won't abandon you. Uh, or once again, it's a, it's a good argument to migrate to those, but only if you face a problem, if you run standard series and you're fine with the performance, please keep on running standard series like for as long as it exists because we don't we want might be breaking news microsoft wants you customer to be happy we don't want just extract your money we want you of course to be paying us for the service we are delivering you that's a business transaction but we want you to spend what is right for you okay we do we really deeply care about this any questions on that? Any comments? I'm kind of like, like boo, woo, whatever. OK, that's good for me. Modern security. Would you like me to show you a demo? Yes. Let me show you a demo. You might enjoy the demo. So this one is the second one. OK, so you see I am connected to a managed instance here, right? That's a managed instance. So let's disconnect and connect to it again. So I'm connecting to another uh, managed instance. So of course, the demo gods is, are because there was a restart. Uh, did it, did it. Uh, no. Sorry for that. So I just connected to my managed instance. Did you notice how I connected to it? I can do whatever I was able to do in you know, whatever previous way before. So did you notice how I connected? Let me show it again. A little bit slower. Yeah, we have enabled Windows authentication with managed instance. So you can really run your application, which is not compatible and requiring Windows authentication, you can connect to managed instance. That's a fully unlocked scenario in limited public preview. Because some, some application can't change to Azure AD and Azure Active Directory password universal with multi-factor authentication or integrated um, just simply do not serve for some legacy application. So we did this whole bunch of improvements on the security front. We do the Windows authentication. We support it and put into a general availability, so release, Azure AD only mode, and even more, we support right now Azure AD authentication for linked servers. And by that means that even the pass through, so you can connect with window authentication to one managed instance and use the linked server and pass the credential like a kind of a double hope to another managed instance by using Windows authentication like you would do with a SQL server. So how it is done? You you need to the setup. Don't worry about this. We will publish good documentation once it is publicly available. You can sign up and get all the documentation now for trying it out. So you will synchronize your local AD with Azure AD. Uh, to set up trusted domain object Kerberos proxy, and on the managed instance, you will need to set up a SPN with all the necessary um, um, privileges that you need to execute on bo uh, to have on both sides and especially Azure Active Directory admin privilege, which is, is a key for, for the setup for big organization that might be not the most trivial thing. Um, so what we did under the hood is we are synchronizing the trust between your Active Directory 
run on premises on other clouds on Azure SQL VMs, uh, Azure VMs, whatever. You sync into the Kerberos realm, and through the O authentication, you can use the Kerberos token to authenticate to managed instance. It will work also for the double hop scenarios. So kind of like EES, think about EES. So the client will send an encrypted Kerberos ticket. It will be exchanged for Azure AD token, which will serve for authentication. That's how it works. Any questions, any doubt about it? You cannot find it for Azure SQL database currently. That's, you know, it's a pretty exclusive feature. Still in limited public preview, so kind of like want to try. I can um, uh, there is a link at the end where you can sign up. Then, as I said, Azure IT only authentication. Pretty cool thing. Microsoft overall says drop your passwords away and this thing will allow you to go a little bit further from currently where you are. I hope it does did not, does not want happen to you. I work for customers. I had customers which would exchange in SQL Server administrator passwords, SQL authentication credentials by email. I mean, how secure that can be, right? <laughs> uh, if you click on that option and confirm, and you have a, of course, pre set up an Azure Active Directory admin, which is a, a requirement, obviously, um, your SQL authentication will stop working, which is a nice option. Or maybe not, but consider it, it's important and it's a next step in evolution in the security. Also, don't forget, you can set up Azure policies saying like, oh, whole, my whole subscription or just the, in this resource group, any any uh, managed instances that will be created, they can only have Azure AD authentication. Works nice. Then, as I mentioned, linked server. You can set up a linked server with Azure Active uh, Directory support, meaning you can use a Windows authentication scenario I just described and managed identities. So you can use a managed identity to connect multiple managed instances to set up um, with a context pass through for the Windows authentication. Same old T SQL code. The only thing you need to set up is the trust groups. It's the same thing you will need to do, for example, for the distributed transactions. If you're using managed identity, please set it up and specify in the connection string the name of the identity you are intending to use for authentication. So kind of like right now you can pass your credentials and uh, for every user have a different type of the authentication or if you are using managed identity, you like in regular SQL server, you can have the um, authentication that is um, universal for everyone who can use this linked uh, server. It, um, the managed identity support allow us to introduce also a user assigned managed identity, which means you can click on off for the system assigned managed identity, the managed identity we would use on the system level in order to authenticate your managed identity with other Azure services. You can click on add, add your own one and specify the primary. So your managed instance will authenticate to any other Azure service by using your specific user assigned managed identity. Those of you who are DBAs might know, oh, we have something like on-prem. Yes, that's kind of like, but it's much better, faster and, you know, safer because it's new. Uh, so I was told. <laughs> no, it is, it is. Um, and what it unlocks is the other thing. You can use a backup and restore of your um, databases. Backup is copy only of non-encrypted databases. 
uh, you can uh, authenticate to storage with a managed identity, which allows you to do a good user assigned managed identity. And you can, you know, use a RBAC, um, all the detailed privileges for that uh, managed identity. Or you can use the bulk insert from the blob storage or open the role set, or you can store your audit uh, on, on the blob storage with managed identity. And besides that, I want to highlight the number five. You, if you are using uh, customer managed key, CMK, so-called on Azure, you can, you know, you encrypt your databases with your own uh, key. Yeah, and you want to authenticate using managed identity to Azure Key Vault, here you go. You can use it with managed identity improvement. Access uh, to Azure Key Vault. Any questions on that? I'll show you the last part. Because people are like probably already having a dinner or falling asleep, but. <laughs> no questions? Come on. You want to ask me something? I'm like, when are you finishing, Nico? <laughs> it's fine. Okay. Carrying on. <coughs> Sorry. We all. Oh, no. John, you were writing something. I'm waiting for for the question. Maybe there will be like, so in order not to interrupt. Also feel free to give me or my colleagues uh, feedback on these features. It makes sense. It doesn't make sense. You're excited, not the best word, but you know, like you see it's useful. You see it's unuseful. I am the person who likes the critique. Not too much, but I can you know, like the only way I can get better and we as a product group can get better if we get a feedback. If you do not give any feedback, we don't know how to make you happy. Works like even in the private uh, personal relationship, I think. Um, AD integration will be a big advance for people finally get there as they can just connect as used. Yes, 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 thank you. So we feel a lot of excitement and a lot of interest on the Windows authentication and Azure, uh, our uh, Active Directory authentication. I think it's a great option. Uh, I would say enable Azure AD authentication for all your managed instances. You trust me, it's a, it's a very, very good and nice and important thing to have. Last thing I want to tell you is service endpoint policies. Did I tell you about how great we care about security? Did I? So currently, if you're using audit, um, transaction replication, backup restore, you can use any storage account, any, anywhere, any Azure Blob storage account. Because by default, we will allow all outbound any storage account. So we are changing that by introducing the service endpoint policies. And you can change from allow all outbound to deny all outbound except as, and you can say whole subscription, whole resource group, or you can go on individual storage account and um, say you can extract the information from managed instance contact only this storage account. Why would it be important? Because it will allow you to get an extra level of security. Even if somebody managed to get access and they're trying to extract information from managed instance, if they have no access on the Azure level, if they have no privileges, still didn't manage, uh, manage to penetrate into Azure, they will not be able to go beyond that. So let me just go to here. Let's close this one and let's go to the service endpoints. I have already here a couple and if I go and open one of them, they are applied on the subnet level, the service endpoint policies. I have none because this one is a wrong one 
MI test policy. So I can see the virtual network and the subnet which I am applying to. I can actually edit here. The setup process is very well documented. My good friend and colleague uh, Zoran is driving this feature. So I can go on the policy definition, need to set up an alias for that, a service alias, then I go here and I say, whoa, 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 whoa. That's not funny. I put that all storage accounts in the whole subscription can be accessed from all managed instances in the subnet? No. I want to go and say just the resource group Nico will be accessible. Any storage account within the resource group Nico will be uh, will be able to get any data from managed instance. That's it. I'm deploying it. It's done. It's propagating. It's currently in the public preview. In two minutes, no more fun, but only inside the resource group. But oh, no, 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 no. I'm wrong. Let's go even deeper. Let's select the storage account and say only Nico storage storage account, and I can send, I don't know, Nico Clio, Nico Synapse ADLS will be able to receive. That's it, I'm deploying it. Two, three minutes later, okay, you can communicate with just specific storage account. That's a brilliant, it's a kind of like, a, I'll say it's a little, but very important, a very nice feature we announced in the public preview currently. Now, what we announced besides all the stuff I mentioned is one thing I did mention, this part, mobility. You can now, in public preview, start moving your managed instances between the subnets. So if you want, you can create a new subnet and move your managed instance. This was kind of like also a big request from the customers, was, um, was not available since three weeks in the uh, preview. Otherwise, that's all I have. Sign up for the previews, connect to us, post your questions. Thank you very much for your attention. And please discover what the SQL Managed Instance is offering, because I hope all of you very soon will be running more of them. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nico. Very good presentation as always. Thank you very much. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm wondering if anyone has a comments, any doubt, maybe anything connected to managed instance outside of the scope. Any questions I can help? Otherwise, how do I say thank you in Greek? Come on, l teach me at least one word. <laughs> Efharisto. Efharisto? Yes, very good. Efharisto. It, it sounds like F Eucharisty in... Um, ah, Efharisto. Okay, wow. I can read Greek. So if you if you want to write in the question in Greek, I can try to read it. <laughs> I, I, di I, I didn't say I will understand it, I, and I, or I didn't mention that I will be able to read it, but I said that I will try to read it. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, Nico, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for your participation. Um, I hope to uh, please join us and follow us. Uh, we are going to have uh, more SQL nights uh, with me or with uh, uh, other guys from product group or uh, uh, guys from community. Uh, we have a question. What is this question? Yeah, it's a good uh, question. So where can people run and uh, find more information about managed instance managed instance yes. uh, um, okay um, i will say here 
as a good start. You can also, um, um, it's a good start. Uh, I work a lot on the documentation, actually, um, you can see even my picture here, um, and I'm looking to improve it in the next two months. So I have as, as a target of doing some stuff. So if you find something in the documentation that is wrong, ping me, like really. I care about it and I, I just yesterday or yesterday I fixed something in the documentation. One colleague found, uh, one field colleague found something wrong and we basically in three hours it was already live. So happy to, to help you out. Evkaristo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. All Thank right. You. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Cheers. Thank you all. I'm going to grab a, a dinner. Over and out. <laughs> Over and out. Cheers. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>